actuary. Great decision. But now what do you have to do? Do you have to go to university and get a PhD? Can you walk in off the street into any insurance company and ask for a job as an actuary? Uh oh. I'm seeing that glazed over. I have no idea what an actuary is. Look on your face right now. Don't worry, I have a video on that. You can click right over here and find out what an actuary is, then come back and watch the rest of this video. Or you can just keep watching this video and not know what an actuary is, because honestly, most people probably don't even know what an actuary is, even if they're working as actuaries, because really, well, what on earth do we do anyway? Just a couple little notes before I go into how to become an actuary. This applies in North America, as that is where I am trying to become an actuary. I have no idea how it works in Europe or in Australia or in Asia, so I'm sorry about that. I also want to say that while this information should be pretty close to fully accurate right now, things in the actuarial community tend to change, so if it changes, please let me know in the comments and I will leave little annotations on the screen to let you know if anything has changed since posting the video. In order to call yourself an actuary, you are going to try to get an accreditation with a society. Chances are that society is either going to be the Society of Actuaries or the Casualty Actuarial Society. Now historically the difference between the SOA and the CAS was that the CAS did non-life, so homes, cars, businesses, and the SOA did life, so pensions, health insurance, life insurance, investing, that kind of thing. But as I mentioned before, things do switch around in the actuarial community, and the SOA does now have a general insurance track, so they are trying to get into the property and casualty side of actuarial things. In both societies, you have two levels of designations. You've got your associate and then your fellowship. In order to obtain these designations, you're going to have to write a series of exams, as well as a few other things which include but are not limited to online modules, something called VEEs, which stand for Validation by Educational Experience, and Professionalism courses. Now, if you've ever asked an actuary how many exams you have to write to become a fellow, you've probably got a sort of like uh, 10-ish exams? As an answer, this is because there are multiple paths that you can kind of take once you decide to specialize, and depending on what path you take, you might have more exams, you might have more modules, but 10-ish is a good estimate. When you first start off on your exam-taking journey, you will be starting with what are called preliminary exams. Now, fortunately for all of us trying to become actuaries, you do not have to decide what you want to specialize in right away. Up until recently, the preliminary exams were jointly sponsored by the SOA and the CAS, however, that has recently changed as well, but the CAS will still recognize all of the SOA preliminary exams, asterisk, except for MLC, but we won't get into that. So the preliminary exams are still going to be the same whether you want to go life or non-life. On the SOA side, there are five preliminary exams, and on the CAS side, there are six preliminary exams. Because exam MLC just recently split off into LC and ST on the CAS side, but we won't get into that too much. I don't want to underplay these exams. They are tough. They recommend 100 hours of studying per hour of exam, so a 3 hour exam would require about 300 hours of studying. I know. Even after those 300 hours of studying, the exams are designed so only about 40 to 50% of people pass them. Not to scare you away or anything, but chances are you're gonna fail at least one or two or three or ten of them. One thing that's kind of cool about becoming an actuary is you don't need a degree in actuarial to become an actuary. It's all about these exams. However, I would say that you definitely do need a degree. Now, I'm not an employer, I've never hired someone, but if I were looking at a resume and I saw that someone didn't have a degree, I think I'd probably be less inclined to hire them. But again, I've never hired anyone, so. I could be completely wrong. I am getting my degree in actuarial mathematics, but you can get a degree in math, in business, in physics, whatever really tickles your fancy as long as you're passing these exams on the side. What you do need from university is to get your VEEs. VEE stands for Validation by Educational Experience. If you go on the SOA website, I'll link it in the description, they have a full list of courses on their website that basically says if you get a B- in this course, you understand the basics enough to not have to take an extra exam on top of the exams that you're already taking. You will need the VEEs for the SOA and the CAS, but the way that it works, I'm pretty sure, is even if you're going CAS, you have to get your VEEs accredited with the SOA, and then the SOA will transfer the credits to the CAS. On the SOA side, you have a series of eight modules that you have to do. They're basically like online courses where you have to submit an assignment at the end of each of them. After the fifth one, I think, you have to do an interim assessment, which is basically like a bigger assignment. And then after the eighth one, you have to do your final assessment, which is an even bigger assignment that you have to do. On the CAS side, you have two modules that you have to do to become an associate. These are more like the multiple choice exams that you'll see in the preliminaries, except they have less material and a higher pass rate. Moving into your upper level exams, that's where you're really going to have to specialize. If you go CAS, it's one track. If you're going SOA, you get to choose between life, 
pensions, health and benefits, insurance, uh, general insurance now. I feel like I'm missing something right now, but I'll leave the paths. Maybe I'll just type it over here. I don't know. Pass them all and you can call yourself a fellow when you're done. Congratulations! You're an actuary now! Almost. Sorta. Kinda. I wish it was like that, not having to study so much, but hey, studying is great! If you think this video could help someone, feel free to share it with a friend. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more of my face. I put out new videos every Saturday and also bonus videos in the middle of the week when I feel like doing it and I'm not in finals or just going insane. Thank you for calling!